That's why the enemy tries to destroy unity. A strong defense is needful. You have to have defense. It's needful. It's a necessity. However, if a team is, is to be a winning team, it must have a strong offense. You just can't keep blocking the ball and never score. What does that do? If you, when you steal that ball, you better know to go. One thing uh, my sons knew, if, they, if you stole that ball, you better go make that layup at the other end of the court. You better not be looking back either. You know, you get that ball, you off to the races. Beeline, amen? Don't be looking back because you start looking back, you lose a second every time you look back. I used to hate in track. I never forget, before so when I started running track, my coach would tell me, Coach Charmack, he said, How, you know, you're one of your biggest problems, you look back. You're winning the race, why are you looking back? You're losing a second. And he timed me, he timed every time. So you look back four times, you lost four seconds on your run. Because I wanted to see how bad I was beating him. I'm beating him. So I could sort of ease up. He said, why don't you just run the race? Why don't you just run? Stop worrying about who's behind you. Stop worrying about who's following you and who's with you. Just run your race. You must have a strong offense. You must be able to score. You must be able to lead the team to the victory circle. You, gotta, you can't be scared of victory. Some of us are scared of victory. We're scared of making it. When you look like you're making it, you start defeating yourself with your words. You get half the money that you wanted. Well, I don't got the rest. Well, why don't you just thank God for what you got? See, a strong defense by itself will not get the victory. God, so what the enemy would love for the church to do is stay in a defensive stance. Just stay right here. Never looking to score. You understand what I'm saying? One thing you teach people in basketball, when I was coaching, I said, you, got to, you had to know this defensive stance, but then you had to know when you got that ball, you need to know that triple threat position. You need to know where you could go. You can go in three, you could, you could, you could pass, right? You could shoot, or you can go to the hoop. You had to know that you, you, those were offense. You had to know, I would, t I would drill that offense. You had, to, you had to know that triple threat right here. Boom, boom. And that, and that person on defense, they don't know. you shaking them, you hurting them because they don't know. And most players don't learn that triple threat. Basic, foundational, that triple threat position will mess the other team up every time. Foundation. Foundation. Because you're ready to score. And they don't know how it's coming at you. You may pass like LeBron or, or Magic, or you may take it like Jordan, or you may just take the shot like Curry. See, our goal is not to hold on. Our goal is not preventing the devil from further progress. Our goal is not just survival, but hear this now. We want revival. We don't want to survive. We want to thrive. How many Titus are surviving? See, you got to get sick and tired of surviving. You got to choose that you want to thrive. You want nothing less than revival in your house, in your marriage, in your family. It's a choice. Our goal is not to resist the gates of hell, but to tear them down. Can we agree with that? I don't want to just play church. I want to tear the gates of hell. I, I want to see families restored. I want to see marriages restored. I want to see singles on fire for God with a, with a vision and a purpose for their life. Amen? I want it. We must be consumed with a desire to excel in the things of God. That has to be our prayer. Consume. It takes all that past. It takes all that and some. Did you hear me, church? It takes all that and some. It takes all that and some. It takes all that and some. Why? Because I'm not just building for this generation. I'm building for the next generation and the next generation and the generation to come so we can set up a godly legacy. Amen? The Father, God's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I wanted to be a, the God of Pop Alec, my great-grandfather. Amen? Jesse, my dad's father. Howard Sr., Howard Jr. Howard, are y'all with me? I want a legacy. That's what you're building. That's what you're building. It's sticking on me. Next one, please. We are engaged in a spiritual conflict. Our enemy is not people. We must face the conflict as if it's our very salvation depends on it because it does. Scripture in Ephesians that we need to look at, uh, Ephesians 6 and 12, we do not what? 
wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now that seems all scary. Seems like there's a whole bunch coming against us. But you have to understand this. God guaranteed us the victory in the situation. So it doesn't matter that coos comes against you. If God before you, no one can stand against you. You got to know that. I don't care who's lying on you. I don't care what people are saying about you. God is for you. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something I think. I'm telling you something I know. Walking for God at times can be lonely. I'm not, I won't lie to you. It, it, it doesn't always feel comfortable. But it becomes lonely because we don't focus on who's really with us. See, you can be lonely in a room filled of people. Because you're not sensitive to who's with you. And what I'm trying to tell you, when you feel lonely, God is with you. And what you have to do is you have to cut out the distractions and become more sensitive to him being with you. Are y'all with me? See, you got to know that he is with you. And he is better than a room full of folk. God's yes to you is greater than all the world's yes. God's yes to you is greater than all the world's no. You got to understand that. There's power in God's word. Amen? God has given you and promised you the victory. The one thing the enemy of our soul wants us to do more than backslide is to become stagnant. He wants to become satisfied with being faithful to God enough to ease our conscience. Let's just go to church so that everybody won't be calling us. Right? Let's just get all these people off our back. If my family asks me if I'm going to church, I'm going to church. I even take you to where we're going. But just get off my back. No, God don't want you to stay there. He wants to stir a passion on inside of you for God. He wants to burn something in your heart so you can go to that next level and it becomes a longing. Pray just enough to feel good about ourselves. You know, just let me just pray because, you know, we got low self-esteem anyway. No, that's not what it's about. I want to touch heaven. Right? Who else wants to touch heaven? Don't you want to touch heaven? Don't you feel God good when you, when, you, when you spend time with God? I feel like I can take the whole world no matter what comes at me. I can handle it. That's what prayer does to me. Well, people say, well, when I go to prayer, I feel so bad at first because you walk in condemnation. Let me tell you something. When you go to God in prayer, God does expose your heart. But all you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Everybody try to say, Lord, forgive me. Now, it's the, as soon as you do that, it's taken away. You know, you know why you have a hard time? You don't believe him when you say that? Huh? You know why? You know why? Because many think, I'm waiting for one why, thank you. Because many of us, we walk in unforgiveness. So we think God loves and forgives like we do. So we impose our human nature on him. But God says, when you ask for forgiveness, I take your sin away. I wipe it clean. So you go to prayer and the enemy shows you what you did wrong. You lied, you cheated, you were mean to somebody. He shows you that and you get discouraged and you stop praying. You say, man, I can't pray. I always feel bad when I pray. Now let me tell you the difference. When I pray and I get an enemy shows me, okay, you're a mean detective right here. You holler at the kids. I say, Lord, forgive me. Please help me to be a better person. And I begin to keep worshiping God. And I say, Lord, I thank you for taking all that away. He showed me that I'm not perfect. And I know that. And you know that. Now, Lord, please help me. And Lord, I intercede for this person right here. I intercede for that person right here. Are you with me? Understand that we can walk in God's forgiveness. Don't get up and march off. Man, I got all this stuff wrong with me. No, give it to daddy. He's my father. Now, one thing about this daddy, he's always giving you what you need. Now, when I say daddy, that's burned a lot of things in people's heart because some of you don't even know your daddy or you don't have a good relationship with your daddy. But I'm telling you, God, the father, is a, fa is a loving father. He's the, most, he's the father of the whole universe, and he's my dad. And guess what? He wants to hear from me, and he wants to hear from you. Amen? And you got to give it to him. You don't have to do this in your own. Now, let me tell you something. Some, okay, I'm hearing this, Holy Spirit. Some of you have been stopping your blessing. 
You've been stopping your blessing. This is prophetic right now. You've been stopping your blessing because you don't let people give to you. You, let, you like to be the one that give, but when they try to give back to you, you don't receive it. And you've been stopping your blessing. And you've been crying to God, said, I've been giving, I've been helping people, and where is mine, Lord? And the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now, I tried to give it. Lord, show them right now, Holy Spirit. I've tried to do it several times. And you say, no, I'm not going to let you do that. You've stopped your blessing. You've stopped your blessing. Understand, come up here, honey. Understand this, when you allow people to give to you, when you sown, you release the cycle of blessing in your life and in theirs. Are you with me? How would I look? You know, we, we, we didn't do it last year, but in, uh, past appreciation day, if I said, nope, I don't want nothing. I just want.